Hey everyone, today we're gonna build something super cool. We're gonna have two pages. The first page is gonna be tracking our location, our geolocation on our phone as we take a walk or as we cycle. And then we're gonna collect this data and draw it on a map using Mapbox. So let's get started. We'll start by creating a new folder called map tracking. And inside this folder, we're gonna have a tracking.com HTML page and then for later on we're gonna need an index.html and an app.js. Let's open this with Visual Studio Code and then let's serve it using npx HTTP server. So now let's go back to the browser and open this localhost port 8080. Open DevTools console and now we're gonna go into the tracking.html page. The first page we're gonna build, tracking.html, is gonna use the Navigator Geolocation API, which is an API that allows us to get the position, the geo position using the GPS of the person. That's gonna be either using their laptop or maybe using their phone. And we're gonna collect all of these in an array and save it in local storage so that later on we can read it and draw it on a map. So we're gonna start with the boilerplate we have and I'm using that from Emmet. I'm gonna call this one tracking location and that's gonna have two button, one to start the tracking and then another one to stop. I'm gonna give these two different IDs, start and stop. And we're not gonna write a lot of JavaScript code, so I'm gonna make it inline over here just for simplicity. And I'm gonna grab a reference to both of these. So that's gonna be const start and stop equals and we use query selector to find them by ID from the DOM. And then we're gonna add an event listener on the start button. So when we click on it, what do we wanna do when we click on the button? What we're gonna do here is we're gonna call the geolocation API. So that's gonna be navigator.geolocation. And then we have two methods. I'm gonna start with the get current position. And this get current position accepts a success callback. So what are we gonna do once we get a response from the GPS server? Let's, we can console log it. And then if there is an error, we pass in an error callback over here. So error, and I'm just gonna console log it. And then finally, we can pass in some options. Let's just pass nothing for now and try it in the browser. Let's go back, reload. And now we have the start and the stop button. We click on the start. Notice how it asks us that the browser wants to know your location. I wanna talk about two important things here. One, never ask for geolocation on page load because no one's gonna accept that. It just doesn't make sense. Why does this page wanna ask for my permission? Ideally over here, we would have some graphics, a little bit of text that explains to this user that the point of this app is to collect the data so that later on we can draw it on a map. And then two, the geolocation API only works on HTTPS. So if your website is on HTTP, it will not work. However, localhost is an exception, so that's great. We don't have to worry about creating an SSL certificate for our localhost. So now that I allow the location, we're gonna wait a few seconds and then boom, we have a location. I'm not gonna expand this to not reveal my location, but do know that if you are on a laptop, you will most likely be on a laptop when coding this, which means you're most likely gonna be indoors this could take several seconds because when you're indoors, it's hard to reach GPS signal. But once you deploy this and you run this on your phone and you are outdoors, most of the time it's gonna be faster to reach the GPS signal, which means you will get a location faster. Now, if I take my laptop and then move, this is not gonna update because this is a single call to get current position. Sometimes you might be interested in getting location changes and for that we have a different method but only use that method if you're really offering something that has to do with location that changes because it's gonna drain the battery. Let's take a look at how we can use it. So instead of get current position, I can ask for watch position and that's gonna call my callback every single time the browser thinks that my location has changed. So now let's go back to the browser, reload it. I wanna show you how this works, but without revealing my location and also, I want to move, but I cannot take the camera with me, so I want to show you how it shows you the updates. And luckily, there's a tool that helps us with that in DevTools. So I'm going to press Command-Shift-P or Control-Shift-P, and I'm going to open the sensors, show sensors. And over here, I'm going to click Berlin, and that's going to set my location to Berlin. 
So now if I start, notice that we don't get a prompt anymore because we already allowed localhost to see our location. So now this is what we get back. We get a data with a coords object which has the latitude and the longitude and the accuracy. I think this is probably meters, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, what if I change my location? Of course, it doesn't have to be a dramatic change. Maybe you can add a two over here. And then we get another update saying that the location has changed. I can also choose Sao Paulo. I can also choose other cities. And then, yeah, you can see how it's updating. Since I'm gonna be going out and cycling, I do wanna get high accuracy positions. So you can ask the browser to give you high accuracy positions by turning on the high accuracy flag. If you just care about rough data, then it's better not to turn it on because this is gonna drain the battery. So you can specify this as the third argument. So again, watch position takes the success, takes the error, and then we can enable, enable high accuracy and that's gonna be true. Now that we have the data, we wanna store it in a local storage so that later on when I'm back from cycling, I can show it on a map. So I'm gonna create an array of coordinates. And then every time I get a response back, I'm gonna to push to that array. So coordinates.push. I'm gonna push the data.coords.latitude and the data.coords.longitude. Finally, I need to save that in local storage and the local storage API is a synchronous storage, which means it could be slow if you use it very often. In this particular example, we don't really care about performance, it's just a toy app. It allows us to store keys and values, but both of them are strings, which means if we want to save an object, like an array, we cannot save it as is, we have to JSON stringify it first. That's because JSON stringify is going to convert it from an array into a string, which is then compatible with local storage. So let's go ahead and call local storage dot set item. And that's gonna be coordinates. And then we cannot immediately save coordinates. We have to call JSON dot stringify and then coordinates. And I'll reload the page, start. And if we inspect the local storage dot get item coordinates, we will have some of the coordinates saved over here which is great. Then if you want to get the array out of that, we just call json.parse, which does the opposite of json stringify, and we will get an array of the coordinates. Of course, as you move, you will start getting more and more positions. So that's it for now. I'm going to go out and cycle a little bit with my phone running this app. Make sure you are on HTTPS or else the geolocation will not work. And also one more thing, your phone will turn off the screen after 30 seconds or one minute, and we cannot keep it on. There's something called Wake Clock, but it's not available in browsers yet. Actually, one of my friends is actually working on that API, the Wake Clock API. His name is Kenneth from Denmark, and I think it just landed in Chrome beta, so we cannot really use it right now. It's not supported on all browsers. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna change the settings from my phone and make it not turn off the screen for 30 minutes. Just a temporary hack. Uh, hopefully in a couple of months or maybe a couple of years we can use this API when it makes sense. So let's go cycling. And I'm back from cycling. <sighs> well, of course I did the cycling part first and now I'm recording both videos at the same time, but I lowered the camera so you think that it was a different scene. Anyway, we have the data on my phone over here and we need a way to transfer it to my computer. And this is why we need a cable. I'm gonna plug that cable in my computer and I'm gonna plug it in my phone. And now we can Go to Chrome, colon, colon, slash, inspect. And I'm gonna see my phone over here. 
For this to work, you need to have an Android device. You can do the same on iOS, but then you have to use Safari. And then two, you need to enable USB debugging and you have to accept the prompt on your phone to trust your computer. And then I click inspect. And now I have an inspector running for this page, which I have accidentally reloaded, but that's not a big deal because remember we had the data in our local storage. So if I click on local storage, I will have the list of all the coordinates over here. I can read them with local storage dot coordinates, but this is going to give me the string. So then I need to JSON dot parse it. And this is going to give me the object over here. So I collected around 200 data points. That's great while I was cycling. But the last step is I need to copy this to my computer and, and I cannot copy it like this. This doesn't work unless you want to reformat it later on. Luckily, Chrome DevTools and I think other DevTools have this copy command over here, which is going to copy it into my clipboard. So if I show you my clipboard over here, you can see this is what I just copied here. And now I can close this. I'm done with it. And I can go back and I can go back to Visual Studio Code, paste it over here, scroll all the way to the top. And these are all the data points that I have collected. So just before we get started, I realized, actually I did it on purpose, we have saved the data in latitude and then longitude, whereas Mapbox expects longitude and then latitude. This is not a big deal, but this is an opportunity for me to show you some cool tricks in your editor. You can do them in VS Code, however, I like to do them in Sublime Text, even though I use VS Code for day-to-day -day things. But all the transformations, when I have a lot of data, I do them on Sublime Text. So let's copy all of this, open Sublime Text, paste and go all the way to the top. And now what I want to do is I want to find every longitude and then switch it. And luckily here, the latitude and longitudes are really different. So I can choose all the four ones and, the, and then select them. But let's say you cannot. What we can do is we can select the closing bracket. So select one of the closing brackets and then hit Command D several times or Control D on non-Mac computers and then all the way until the end. And now scroll back to the top and I'll move the cursor left, left, left. And we are on the longitude. I can press command control up or control shift up on non-Mac computers. And that's going to push the line to the top, write a comma so that the array stays invalid format. And that's it. I just switch the latitude and longitudes. I just want to make sure you know about my courses, learnjavascript.online. You can learn modern JavaScript over here. You can take your own notes and you will come back here and be able to solve your own challenges. I think you're going to love them. If you're enjoying this channel, you're definitely going to enjoy these courses. And I also have now a React course. So that's going to be on react-tutorial.app. And you will learn React step by step in a highly interactive environment. I can show you some of the lessons over here. This is it. This is one of the lessons and you can see this is one of the projects where you build your online store where you can log in, add the amount of products that you want to buy and log out. And I think you're really going to enjoy this course. Now let's copy this. This is going to be the data that we're going to use in the other file in the index.html where we're going to have the map drawing our path. So let's get started with this and say map and then we're going to use a script and that's going to be pointing to the app.js and I'm going to give it type module. If you're not sure about this type module or map, make sure to check out my previous video, which is linked somewhere at the top. And then let's create the div with an ID map. Perfect. And go into the app.js and let's just save our coordinates. So this can be const coordinates. These are all the coordinates. Now let's go to the top, we will need to import Mapbox. So let's go to Mapbox first, click on web, and then we will use the Mapbox at the end. We need the styles, copy the styles, put them in the index.html, and then copy the script tag. And that's something we can import here at the top. And now finally, we need uh, the HTML and some of the styles. But as usual, I like to make the map full screen. So let's do it ourselves in a style over here. That's going to be the map. It's going to have a width of 100 VW, so viewport width, and a height 100 VH, viewport height. 
and let's reset the margin on the body. And now this is the code we need to start with the map. Remember that I will be resetting my token so, so you cannot use my token, you have to create your own, change this to const. And this is gonna match the ID we have in HTML. And when we go next, this is where we wanna look for something similar to our example and that's it here, add a GeoJSON line. Click on it. And we have an example that you can see here. Is this what you're trying to do? Yes, that's exactly it. We want to have a list of coordinates. And from that, we want to draw the, the lines on the map. So we have the map creation that's all been taken care of. We can copy all of this code and I will explain it. Paste it over here. And that's starting with a map.onload. We add a new source of data, which we're going to call root or route. You can call it whatever you want. The type of it is a GeoJSON and it's a line string because you've got other, you've got several types of GeoJSON geometry. And this is where you have to give it the list of coordinates, longitude, and then latitude. And then you add this layer to the map. And this is where you can specify how it looks like, the color. Maybe we'll play around with these at the end. I would always go back to the browser, see if the sample usage works before customizing it. So let's go back, reload the page and actually go back to the index.html this time. And scroll up and zoom in on San Francisco. Instead of uh, zooming in a lot, we can just go back and copy the same center and the zoom level. And yes, this is it, we're already drawing it. Now we can just go back and it's gonna be as easy as getting rid of all of that and replacing it with coordinates because we already have the coordinates in a variable at the top. Then I'm gonna use one of the points in the middle as the center so that we can actually see our map. We don't wanna focus it on San Francisco, we wanna focus on Amsterdam and then reload the page And that's it, we were able to take the coordinates that we recorded from our phone, draw it on the map, and you can also customize this even more. You can make it uh, draw the map live. It's just really interesting to, do, to be able to do these kind of projects that don't take a lot of time. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to check out learnjavascript.online or even if you wanna learn React, reacttutorial.app. They're both linked in the description below and I'll see you soon.